Alright, we're back. So up to this point, uh, I've laid down the two base colors, I let those dry, and then I wanted to seal these colors. So I use this product here. It's a Krylon matte finish. Um, I purchased this at Walmart, but you could probably find it elsewhere. Um, at Walmart, it's in the paint department, but it may not always be there because this is typically like if you go to an art supply house like a Hobby Lobby or a Michaels or a you know one of those other um, uh, arts crafts place um, you might find this over in the art section with the paint brushes and the paints over there um, because this is generally used for sealing things like pencil drawings I used to use this years ago in college as an illustrator uh, and I would seal my uh, my inks and my uh, my pencil drawings with that stuff um, it seems to be lacquer based and one of the things I like to using, um, using that for is it helps to not only seal these colors, but it also helps kind of melt them together. And you can see that in some of my other videos where I use the same product, you can see it. It just kind of melts the colors together, blends them together, and it works really, really well for that. Uh, you're not going to see much of that on this piece. All right, so the next thing I want to do is start dry brushing. So I've sealed that, and it's great because I'm using acrylics here to paint with. So if I mess up from this point on, I can always get back to this point, and that's because of that Krylon matte finish that I put on there. So uh, the next color is going to be kind of a, a bone color um, that I'm going to put on top of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start dry brushing that over the uh, brain area and a little bit of the forehead area here. So uh, let me get this set up. I've just got a, a rag here. And let me get a nice, with dry brushing, I like to use um, a really ragged out brush uh, for that. I want something with a stiff bristle. Um, and it can be one of your grungy brushes. You know, after a while, brushes start to get a little wear on them. They get a little flare at the end and they, they don't stick together quite so well. Um, so these brushes are great for doing this type of work because, you know, they're, they are kind of ragged and um, it just helps um, kind of put on that paint. And it's a dry brush, so I'm just scratching the surface of it with it, really. So uh, I'm going to take this, I'm going to get a little on the brush here, but most of this paint is going to come back off of the brush. So that's what the little t-shirt's here for. And so I get most of that back off of there. And then I'm going to just start dry brushing over the edge because all I'm wanting to do is capture the, the highlights, the, the top edges of the little brain here. So that's why we want to use that stiff uh, brush because it won't get down into the crevices. A softer brush would tend to dip down into those crevices, but a, a harder, uh, stiffer bristle brush won't do that. And I'm just changing the direction because the lobes on the brain go in different directions, so I have to kind of switch it up a little bit. Well, I got a little too much on there at that time. So that's the nice thing about this, is if you get too much on, well, just get a little bit of water. wrap the same t-shirt around my finger here. Once again the same principle because I don't want it dipping down into the lobes I just want to get it off of the surface there. If I wrap the t-shirt around my finger rather than wadding it up and you know rubbing the uh, little brain area here I'm just taking it off it's not getting down into the crevices as much. All right, so let's see what we get here. Dry brushing just takes time. You know, you just got to build it up. Okay, so you can see here <clears throat> what we've done is uh, just keep adding, slowly building up the, uh, the uh, little bone color here. And I just keep adding, adding, adding. Uh, I covered up a lot of the darker... Uh, uh, 
you know, this was the uh, brandy wine color here. And you see most of that is already gone uh, because I've put so much of this bone color in here. But it, it seems to work for me. Uh, I let that dry and then I hit a second coat of this and that's where you see the lighter colors. Um, so probably what I'll do is before this is all over with is go back over the brain area again with this brandy wine color in a wash and try to blend some of that back in here. So um, anyway, I, I think it looks pretty good. It's, uh, it's looking kind of brainish there. And I think once I throw that wash on there, it'll really look cool. Uh, so next step is to do a little dry brushing on the green here. And for that, I'm just going to use the uh, the straight um, uh, olive green, as they're calling it here. But this really, really bright green, uh, that's what I'm going to use. And, um, and we'll get started with that. So with this, I'm just going to use a little dollop of the, uh, of the green that I already had here. Um, and I'm going to go with a little bit softer brush here. Still a uh, stiff brush, but it's just a little bit softer than the other one that I had. Um, very, very little paint on the brush itself. And, um, and once again, we'll just start dragging it across and just barely touching the piece here. Um, what we're trying to do is hit uh, the topmost edges of the um, you know whatever the sculpt is and what that does is that actually touches the brush or the bristles and it transfers the paint and the recesses are, are left alone so uh, dry brushing uh, can be a very slow process uh, I encourage you to try it take your time I can't stress that enough because it does take time to build it up um, change the direction of the brush. So like here, his, uh, the sculpt kind of has a ridge running this way. So instead of brushing that same direction, I'll go the opposite direction and uh, it'll transfer more paint. And we can actually see that and I'm actually gonna get a little bit of it up there on that brain too because I want to bring out those details. Once again, just changing direction, just looking at, you know, what's in the sculpt. And, uh, and just going the opposite direction of whatever's in the sculpt. And this, too, is the point where I said, you know, it's going to get on the eyes, it's going to get on the teeth. That's okay. It's such a light color. It's not going to be a big issue for me. Getting in here, building this up. Okay, so here we are. We've got, um, I went ahead and worked a, a second dry brush coat of the uh, olive green, the really bright green on here because it just didn't seem to be uh, just standing out as much as I wanted it to. So I worked that in there. Look pretty nice, pretty nice. Um, the brain here, got that finished up, and um, what I wanted to do was maybe add a little more of a wash to it uh, to help bring out some of the little lobes here. Um, so I experimented with a couple of things here. Um, the first is I just took the same brandy wine color, and then I mixed it with my, uh, with my airbrush medium. Okay, And the result of that was this, and it's it's real kind of Barbie pink, you know? Uh, and I was like, well, I'm not sure, but if this Liquitex medium is what it says that it is, then it's really just the binder. It's just the acrylic medium itself. And so what I want to do is just show you what this stuff looks like. All right, so I'm just make sure it's mixed up. It's nice and thin. But like I said, it's really Barbie pink here. Um, and if we apply it, so if I start applying it, well, it looks Barbie pink, right? So what's up with that? Well, the, the medium itself does have, like, I guess, I don't know that it's a pigment necessarily, but it is white. It's kind of milky white. We saw that when we uh, put that out here a little bit earlier in that little cup. But... It is just supposed to be 
basically like raw acrylic. Uh, maybe a, there's a couple other little things in there to help, you know, lower the viscosity of it, or I guess, yeah, lower the viscosity. I think is correct. Basically, make it thinner. How about that? Um, so, if that's the case, then why is it turning white? Well, you know, honestly, I don't know. But what I do know is that when this thing starts to dry, what should happen is that white color, that pink, should disappear and it should come back to more of this brandy wine color. So, uh, we're going to just pause it here and see what happens. Okay, so through the magic of editing here, um, we, we've gone a little further here uh, in time here. We've allowed this um, uh, Liquitex airbrush medium to dry up. And I don't know if it's going to show up here in the video, so I'm going to turn it just a little bit. It's still not completely dry, but look at what was Barbie pink before. It's starting to darken up to that brandy wine color. So there's this side. Now let's compare that to this side. Now this side has already had one coat of it already, um, but it was something a little different. I'm going to tell you what that is in just a moment. I got the result that I wanted on both sides. Um, this one is still a little wet right now, uh, but as you can see, instead of it being that Barbie pink color that's in the cup, um, it is starting to darken up to be more of that brandy wine color. Now, I told you that I did something else with this too. Well, I went upstairs, I told you I can't find future floor wax anymore. So I went upstairs, looked underneath the uh, cabinet um, in the cleaning goods, and my wife uses a mop and glow product. Big bottle of it, relatively cheap. I did basically the same thing. I squirted some of that into this cup, put that same brandy wine color in it. You can see it's much darker, uh, but I've got a little jar of this mop and glow. It's much thinner. It still has this kind of white milky color, but it's um, it's nowhere near as um, milky as the uh, airbrush medium. So, you know, I think I'm going to get the same result here, even though this one is, the, the, the mop and glow is a little darker. This does have a, a clean, fresh scent, but it's not an annoying scent. So uh, I might start using this as a replacement for my uh, future floor wax. So uh, anyway, uh, it seems to work really well. Uh, I'm going to put another coat of this on this side of the brain, and, um, and that way we can compare the two products. Okay, so I just applied a fresh coat of uh, my Mop and Glow Floor Wax with the brandy wine on this side. And you can see, yeah, it still turned it kind of that little pinkish color, but maybe not as pink as the Barbie pink over here with the airbrush medium. Uh, I think as it dries, though, the result is going to be the same. I'm going to get those really dark brandy wine crevices that I really wanted in the brain here. So uh, just a nice little finishing wash. We started off with the brandy wine as a base color. We dry brushed uh, some lighter color on top of that and now we're going back with a wash. And that wash just helps kind of blend those two uh, colors, that base color and the uh, dry brush color back together. So anyway, there it is. Uh, I'm going to let this dry and then we'll move on to the process of uh, painting the eyes and the teeth and throwing in some of the other details. Let's move on to the next step. I want to start painting the eyes and then the teeth. So a lot of folks would use like a pure white for this and uh, I do have a pure white uh, here. Uh, but on my paint palette here I have a couple little daubs of paint. Um, I've got a black, because uh, I'm going to add a little bit of black to the white, but then I'm also going to add a little bit of this blue to it, because I want kind of a, a, a bluish gray tint to the eyes. Um, sometimes I'll go a little bit to the yellow side, uh, but in this case I want to do a little bit of blue, because I think it'll work really well with the, uh, with the uh, skin tones and stuff here. It's a nice little contrast with it. So um, that's what I'm going to do here. I am going to get a decent sized brush here. Okay. Now the paint here, I was talking about the different types of paint that I use. Now this one is really off the wall. Uh, <laughs> this is latex house paint. <laughs> so I don't know that you get a whole lot different than that. Uh, but it works really well. Um, so I'm just going to put a couple dabs out of this because one's going to be for teeth and then one is going to be for the eyes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and mix up the one for the eyes. And um, 
Like I said, I'm going to take just a touch of this black and we'll put that in there. That gets me kind of a grayish color. And then, once I get it to a gray, nice gray, I want just a touch of the blue and put that in there. And what that does is kind of cool it off a little bit. It cools the gray off, maybe just a touch more. And I mean, it is literally just a touch of that blue. And um, <clears throat> gives me a nice, still looks white. If you don't see it compared to pure white right next to it, it still looks white. Um, so this is gonna work really well. We'll rake some of this off of this brush. And then we're going to go to work on it. All right. So once again, I'm going to turn this so I can see it. All right, let's move on to the other eye here. Just loading my brush up. <clears throat> it's really difficult not to get uh, white in to those areas there. I could probably use a larger brush than this. Flat brush works really well too. I'm using a, a pointed or round brush in this particular case, but a flat brush would work just as well. It'd have to be a small one though so I can get in between the ridge of his eye and the actual eyeball. And I'm actually twirling the brush too as I do this to kind of help wrap the bristles right around the eyeball as I move around it. Just a little twirling motion there. Okay, that's not bad. Trying to keep this in camera and paint at the same time is a little bit difficult, so uh, bear with me. But there we have it. Alright, so I'm going to let that dry. Um, while that's drying, let's work on the teeth. So the teeth are going to be very similar with respect that we, yeah, we're going to start with white. Uh, but this time, we're going to add a little different color to it. Because uh, you don't want pure white. Um, with this one, I'm going to put a little of this uh, raw sienna in it. Okay, just kind of shake that bottle up pretty good. Put a little dollop of raw sienna in it. Uh, once again, I'm going to use some of my floor wax stuff here. The lights that I'm working under are cooking my paints here pretty quick, so I've had to learn to, you know, move pretty fast with this. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> it's not so good. Um, all right, so now I'm getting kind of a tooth enamel color here. Once again, it's just a little bit off white. It's not like super yellow, uh, but it is a little bit off white. It's not a pure white. <clears throat> And I'm just going to go in and put this in here. I'm actually going to go in between the teeth as well, just coating this whole area. Let's do the bottom choppers first.
So uh, that's it for right now. We're going to let this dry, and then we're going to come back and throw a wash on both of these to give them a nice look. All right, well, the next step here is adding some more details. The first detail I'm going to add is the uh, pupils for his eyes. Uh, so what I've done here is taken a little bit of a, a gray color, mixed it in with some black here, and then for good measure, thrown in some of this blue. So it's not a pure black. It's a really dark bluish gray. Um, and that's what I like to use for my pupils. I don't like to use um, solid black. Now, if this was much smaller, I probably would. Uh, but once they start getting, once the pupils start getting a little bit larger, uh, I don't like to use pure black. It just doesn't look right. So there we have it. Not too bad. And like I said, they look really dark here on camera, but they're not. They're not uh, a pure black, and that to me looks a lot better than, say, a pure black. So um, set this down here and let's move on to the next step. Um, what about uh, the teeth here? I want to put a little depth to those teeth. So the next step, just turn my paint palette around here a little bit. This is going to be some burnt umber. Burnt umber. Uh, it's a really dark, kind of a chocolatey brown. I'm just shake it up here real good. This one's really liquidy. I must have mixed this one up for my airbrush. Um, but that's okay because we want it really, really runny here in just a moment. Just a few drops of that. And get some of this uh, uh, floor wax out here again. Because once again, uh, this is a nice little experimentation with with that product and let's see how well it works. So really really runny and I'm gonna load the brush up. I don't want it like mega loaded up though. I'm gonna get some of it off uh, of the brush because I'm gonna put this in here in the teeth. Let me bring this back over here a little closer. Let's move all this out of the way. So when I hit this um, with this brush, that, that capillary action is going to take that and run with it. All right, so now he's got nice grungy teeth. Okay. He hasn't brushed in a while. This is what happens, kids, when you don't brush. So we're going to let that set there just a moment. And really just a moment. And I would prefer to have like a q-tip to do this, uh, but I don't have one. So I'm going to use the edge of a t-shirt here. Get it damp, but not soaking wet. And then I'm going to just brush off here towards the middle of his teeth. So I'm still leaving some of that uh, near the roots of his teeth. And this is why I say having a, um, a uh, ear swab would be a lot better for this particular part of the process, but it works. Until you wipe off too much like I did there. And so there we have it. We got a nice little uh, smiling alien there. Cool. Okay, so one last step here I want to do uh, on the Alien is I'm going to take a little bit of that um, raw sienna, which is the um, uh, this color here, a little more of a tan color, and I'm going to go in here on the teeth, and I'm just going to touch these edges. come back in here and I'm going to touch the edges of the bottom of the teeth and what that's going to do is the floor wax already being on the teeth it's going to help float it and uh, give it almost like an airbrush kind of an appearance it's going to uh, thin it a little bit and kind of make it uh, blend a little better What I want to do now is um, I'm going to take some of this uh, Tamiya color. Uh, this is 
the X22. It's clear. Uh, this is a bottle I've had for a really long time, so the paint inside of it's really, really thick by this point, which I like because it's going to stick where I put it. Um, I'm going to grab a brush. I'm going to use a round brush here. Um, and I mean, I can almost, in fact, I've done this a little bit, is um, here a recent is actually put almost like a saliva type of thing with drips and stuff with this because it's so thick now. Uh, but what I want to do is I'm going to dot this over the eyes. And like I said, it, it kind of stays put because it's so thick now, uh, which is nice. Um, I can also, like I said, recreate saliva. I can put a little bit of, um, um, I don't know, like a little yellow and some red in there to give it kind of an orangey brown kind of uh, feel to it or you can put a little blue and some yellow in there and make it a kind of a green slime but once it starts to thicken up like this it really is kind of nice because it'll just sit right there where you put it. Um, now I also need to paint over the brain with it too but it's going to be a little difficult with it this thick so I think what I'll use on the brain is either some of the airbrush medium or probably my little uh, mop and glow here is what I want to put over at the top of the brain because I want those eyes and the brain to be kind of shiny. The rest of it is going to be kind of a semi matte um, and that's already done. So I sprayed the whole thing with my matte finish and um, I gave it a couple uh, good heavy coats so it's nice and protected and now it's just a matter of dropping these on to make those areas nice and shiny. And then that's it. You have a nice uh, little keychain here. Uh, let me get this out of the way. You can see we've got some of the other ones here. Uh, they're a lot of fun uh, to paint really quick and easy here. I've been sitting here maybe, maybe an hour and a half, really, uh, if that. And a lot of that was waiting for paint to dry and, and you know, other little things. So uh, it doesn't take very long to do these little guys. They're a lot of fun, really easy to do. If you're just starting out with painting, these are great practice. Um, and then you got something cool, little uh, thing to talk about on your key ring. Uh, trust me, um, when people see this, they're going to want to talk to you. Then again, they may want to run the other way. Well, that's it for this time, folks. This is William Everhart with Quarantine Studio saying we'll see you next time.